Hello and welcome to another video. If you clicked on this video, I'm assuming you are taking calculus too or you are just an enthusiastic calculus student because this is not something you see commonly in calculus and this is what you call polar coordinate. So what you see on the board is a representation of a typical function that's written in terms of x and y. So the assignment is to identify what that function is. So you want to know what really would this be if we wrote it in terms of x and y, okay? So the kind of graph that you're used to or we typically use in algebra is called the Cartesian um, coordinate or the C Cartesian plane. That is, um, it's, what you, it's, it's graph. That's where the word cartography is from because um, that's what people used to use to chart to travel on the sea and people who make charts are called cartography. Photographers. Okay, so that's basically what's going on, but we're limited because when you draw some graphs, you can only draw lines. It's not very easy to make circles on a graph, the kind of graph that we have, the coordinate, the rectangular graph that we have. And you notice that every point forms a rectangle on that kind of graph because you're going to have the y and the x. So it's always a box that you're creating all the time, but it's possible for you to make wiggly wiggly curves and in order to make wiggly curves we have to start going along a circle because I think virtually every curve is a part of a circle or a modified circle okay I don't want to go into that but basically this is what you have so assuming you pick a point x y that point is taken to be a part of a circle no matter how far the point is the closer you are to the origin the smaller the radius of the circle. If you pick a point here, this point x, y is the end of the radius of a circle that we usually don't write. So if you write the point in terms of the radius and the angle which that point makes with the x-axis, you say it is a um, polar, you call this point a polar coordinate. We just don't know what those coordinates are, but it's been written this way. So this is an equation and we want to see what it looks like. So what do you need? Every time you do a conversion between polar coordinate and Cartesian or rectangular coordinate. So I'm going to use the word rectangular. It's easier for me to pronounce. Okay. <laughs> so you go from polar to um, rectangular coordinate. You need to know the connection between r and x and theta and y. So it is not complicated. Let's assume you've forgotten. This is how to go back and start from scratch. Number one, from what you know, what is the sine of this angle? The sine of this angle is opposite over hypotenuse. So we can start with that and say, let's write them here. We can say that sine theta is equal to opposite, which is the y coordinate. See, this measures how tall it is, which is y. It's going to be y over r. So from here, if we make y our subject, y will be r sine theta. You need to remember that. Okay? You do the same thing for cosine. What is the cosine of this angle? Cosine theta will be equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, which is going to be x over r. And from here, you can say that x is equal to r cosine theta. See, these are the two most important things that you need. If you remember that y is always r sine theta and cosine is r cosine, I mean, x is r cosine theta, then you don't have anything to worry about. And then you can go back here and solve the problem. However, with a little more manipulation, you can figure out what's going on. Let's go back to the Pythagorean theorem. Remember by Pythagorean theorem, if you want to find any of the three sides in a right triangle, all you have to do is say the square of this plus the square of this is going to give you the square of this. So, one other thing you need to know is that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So, you see how you can replace r or r squared with this? That's what you do. Um, what else do we know? The fastest way, one last thing, the fastest way to connect x and y is to take these two together and that usually is tangent. So we can say that the tangent of this angle, theta, 
is equal to opposite over adjacent y over x. Is there anything else you need to know? It looks like that's it. So let's answer this question. In other videos, I'm going to keep explaining other things as I continue in this polar coordinate journey. Okay, so let's answer this question and be done with this video. Sine 2 theta equals 1. Now, this is my general advice. Whenever you're transitioning from polar coordinate to this, you want to focus on the sine and the cosine first because sometimes you might need to use the R to do some manipulations. So, what I suggest in this case is don't change the R squared first because we can see that R squared is X squared plus Y squared. Okay? So, but don't touch it yet. Leave it. R squared multiplied by sine 2 theta. Um, we do not have 2 theta. We only have sine theta. So how do we write sine 2 theta so that it can only use what we have? Well, remember that sine 2 theta is an identity, is the same thing as 2 sine theta cosine theta. That you have to know from your trig. Okay, so I'm going to write this as 2 sine theta cosine theta equals 1. So now, do I have sine theta here? Yes, it's y over r. Do I have cosine theta? It's x over r. So see what I'm going to do. This is going to be r squared multiplied by 2 multiplied by sine theta, which is y over r. Okay, it's going to be y over r multiplied by cosine theta, which is x over r, and it's equal to 1. And what does this do for me? This r, this is r squared. These two r's will cancel out this r squared so that what I have left is 2 because this takes this out, this takes the other one out. x, y equals 1 or x, y equals 1 half. This is the equation that was in the coordinate form or in the rectangular form that was written in the polar form. Just grab your textbook, look for something, and try to change it from the regular equation using all these information I provided and see how well you'll do. I'll see you in the next video. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.